Today on Ask This Old House. In Utah, I'll transform this ho-hum handrail into something that makes a statement. Now, this looks fantastic. I'm, I'm so happy with how it turned out. Thanks for coming to Utah. My pleasure. I'm glad you like it. You probably don't think much about the pipes that vent your water heater or your furnace. I'll tell you why you should. Nobody likes a plumbing leak, but if it's water, you can deal with it. If it's carbon monoxide, game yeah, over. Deadly. Absolutely deadly. Okay. Do you have an outdated door like this? I'll show you how to make it look like new. Well, I'll tell you what, it's an easy upgrade and it makes a huge difference. And I'll brighten up the front of this house with just a little paint. I love right? it. It's amazing what a little paint can do, huh? How are you? Good. Tommy, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. Welcome to Utah. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Boy, driving up here, I notice a lot of these houses in this development. Yeah, this neighborhood went in the early 2000s. Uh, my wife and my family, we've lived here for about nine years. Great. You know, a lot of these houses are pretty similar, a lot of the same finishes, and we've been working to make our house a little bit different. Let me show you what we've been up to inside. Love to see what's going on in there. Oh, this is really nice. Wide open space in here. Yeah, welcome to our house. Um, my wife and I have been working hard to personalize it a little bit. Yeah. We added this wainscoting detail here in our entryway. To set that nice. apart. And then uh, we had carpet and tile throughout the house. And we tore all that out and put in this nice wide plank laminate flooring. Some shiplap siding. And oh boy, look at this handrail. I love this handrail. Nice and solid. And there's one last piece that, that we need to tackle. Okay. And that's, uh, that's this eyesore right here. Yeah, it does look a little bit out of place. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't quite blend with what we're trying to do. And then it's also, you know, it's just kind of your run-of-the-mill railing, you know. Yeah, I mean, this Most is Most of pretty, my neighbors have the same railing. Yeah, this is pretty stock stuff. You get this at the home center, oak railing and balusters. So what do you have in mind? So I was thinking if we could do something a little bit more square with the wood, like a nice square newel post here. And then what I think would really look cool is if we could do some cable railing. Absolutely. Uh, I'm up for that, so why don't we get started by taking the old one out. Great. Let's work it down nice and easy. Oh, yeah, pull it up. Oh, look at that. <laughs> no nails. Okay, all of the old ballasts are removed. The railing's taken out. We've cleaned everything up, but we left the old newel post. And why did we leave this? I thought we were getting rid of this. Well, you know what? This is really in here nice and solid. And to take it out and then refasten something in there really doesn't make much sense. Now, there's a local mill shop that actually makes stair pots down the road here. And this is made of poplar. It's mitered on all four corners, so it looks like a solid block of wood. But it's actually designed to go right over the existing newel post, just like that. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And at the top, they even mill up a, a cap like that to make it really look contemporary. All right, so now to get started, what we're gonna do is calculate our height, and then we can take the length off of our bottom. We'll need to scribe that to the floor. All right, I'm gonna slide this down, down to the floor. Then you hold two levels on it. Hold it plumb in both directions and I'll mark the bottom to follow the floor. All right, now I'm gonna adjust my scribes to my line that I want right there. Bring it down. Mark it across the bottom on all four sides. Are right, you still good? Still good. Now you can watch This Old House and Ask This Old House anytime, anywhere. Download our new app to stream full episodes to your tablet, your TV, and your phone. Binge on classic episodes, catch up on recent renovations, 
and get step-by-step -step help projects all around the house. And best of all, it's free. The most trusted home improvement information is now available on your Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, iOS, and Android devices. Download the This Old House streaming app today. To make our scribe cut, I'm going to start with an oscillating saw. And to finish that cut up, I'm going to switch to a Japanese pull saw. And then I'll clean it all up with a chisel. and smooth it out with a sander. Okay, Nathan, lay that piece of five quarter up there. Now that's gonna be the transition or the end piece for the floor to transition into the stairway. So we've already squared that end up and that's tight against the newel post. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this newel post, push it tight to the wall, because that's where it's gonna go. And mark our length. And we'll cut that. Now, before we cut the length, I want to take this piece. I want to cut a rabbit in this bottom corner right here and remove this piece so that the floor will go in there and still allow the floor to move and float. With our pieces cut, I'm going to assemble the entire railing system in the garage and install it as a unit. This machine makes mortises in each piece. Then these tenons glue into the mortises, holding everything together. Okay. You ready? Ready. These screws will hold the railings to the newel post while the glue sets up. I'm going to get down there, see if I can line my end up. You balance it. You good? You're good. All right, now let's keep it up and level. You can see we cut the top of the newel post off nice and flat. So we want to try to get this down, keep it parallel with the wall, but also kind of level. We'll see if I can get it down in here. We'll slide it down together. Just put some of this construction adhesive down. And this will really hold it. We'll put a few screws in it. Once the adhesive dries, you'll never get it off. Okay, you ready? I've got it in. Are you even with the post? Yep. All right, let's work it right down. All right, here's the cable that we're going to use for our railing system to go in between the newel post and parallel to the floor. All right, I got a roll of it. These are the fasteners that fasten the cables to the newel post. If you notice, there's two different types, all right? And there's a thread on it right here that's a wood thread and then a machine thread that screws into the fastener. This one right here is adjustable. So when we screw this into the newel post, we screw this in onto the machine thread, leaving it back a little bit. Put the cable in, hold this with the wrench, and then we can hold this steady here and put the wrench, make this tight. When it screws down onto the thread, it will make the cable tight on this end. Okay. Okay, now the building code says that any opening on a stairway, like between a baluster, can't be wider than four inches. Okay. Since the cable could deflect, we're going to space our fasteners three inches. This picket acts as a template for drilling our holes. 
but it will also act as a support for the cable because building code also says that the cable cannot run more than three feet without something to support it. All right, so now we're ready to start the cable. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna feed the cable through the hole. All right, so now take the end of the cable and push it in and then pull back and it should lock itself in. Now I'm gonna pull it tight and right here on these adjusters, there's a line that I need to cut this cable. So that's my reference point. I'll pull it tight, take my cutters, line it up with the line cut it. Now I take the cable and push it in. Okay, there. All right, so now we're ready to start tightening these. And the manufacturer wants you to start in the middle and then alternate your way out. All right, so put the wrench on the outside one right there. That will hold the steady. And I'm going to turn this one in onto the machine thread. And that should tighten the cable. All right, Nathan, there you go. Your reeling is all in. Now all you have to do is sand it up, fill some holes, and stain it whatever color you want. Yeah, this looks fantastic. I'm, I'm so happy with how it turned out. Thanks for coming to Utah. My pleasure. I'm glad you like it. Hey, send me a picture when it's done. Will do. Hey, Richard. Hello, sir. How are you? All right. What are we talking about today? Talking about venting of gas appliances, whether it be a water heater like this, a furnace, or a boiler. It has a flame down below, has flu products that have to get outside the building. So it has temperature, has carbon monoxide, and has usually has some moisture in it, too. Okay. So historically, we use this galvanized smoke pipe. It would come here, it would go into a chimney, and it had plenty of lift, right? There's because plenty of draft, of and it would go right up the chimney and right out to, out to atmosphere through the top of the chimney. Yeah. But as we made efficiency, important as we made equipment more efficient it meant that we were extracting more energy or heat out of the flue products and using it in the water or in the building less heat less lift correct so less temperature so then you couldn't really use the galvanized smoke pipe anymore because it didn't want to go up naturally you needed a fan and you really couldn't let it sit in here with moisture in it because it could rust the metal. And you're saying sit because instead of going up we now start to vent these things sideways Direct, out the side Direct of the vent house. to our side. So, the local installers went and they found whatever material they could find readily available. On the East Coast, they used standard PVC pipe like this. This is drain waste and vent pipe that you'd see readily available at the plumbing supply or the home center. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, it was never designed to be able to take that kind of temperature over time. Mm -hmm. A simple plastic can get brittle over time. If you expose it to heating and cooling, it'll temperature age and it'll start to get brittle. So here's what it should look like right here. Nice and white. Here's one that's been in for a long time here. You can see it discolored on the inside even more yeah. dramatically. Talk about brittle. Here's a pipe that was actually installed in a building. It was built in and it expanded and contracted and it broke off here. Whoa. So now it leaked into the building with carbon monoxide right here. Nobody likes a plumbing leak, but if it's water, you can deal with it. If it's carbon monoxide, game yeah. over. Deadly. Absolutely deadly. Okay. So. They established a standard that said, from now on, you have to have, if you're going to use a, a PVC, it has to be a PVC that's been designed and tested for use as a gas vent. Okay. okay. So, and that, so it would look like this. It would clearly say gas vent right on the piping gas right here. Gas vent categories. The other part of the standard is both the pipe and the fitting should be manufactured by the same manufacturer. Why is that? Well, here's an example here. This is two different manufacturers. You see how loose this is? Oh, yeah. Okay, now you might be able to put enough glue in there to make it, but you don't want to rely on the glue. You want the fitting itself to be tight. Because we want it airtight. Yeah, this is the way it should be. You know. Oh, yeah. Okay? Got it. Okay, okay. so that's an important standard. So I guess the lesson is I mean, we're looking for this for yeah. new installation. Yeah. If we have that, well, if you, if you see in your basement as a homeowner that this is fully discolored, it might be time to have a pro come in and check it and find something that's a little safer. And as is always the case, a good CO detector is cheap insurance. Cheap insurance, absolutely. Good be, information. Be safe. Thank you. Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider. 
a new streaming service from this old house, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial-free. Watch it all in the This Old House app and join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. Hey, Nathan. Hi, Kevin. So you think about upgrading an old door for us, huh? Yeah, the old hollow core doors. Well, these things were everywhere, weren't they? They really were during the 50s and 60s, during the post-war boom, and they were putting them in every house. Cheap, easy to make. Yep. They were hollow on the inside. They, uh, there might be some cardboard or a few ribs in here to stiffen it up. Some pine on the side so you could do your hinges and your doorknob, mm -hmm. but very simple. And very light. Like you said, not much to them. No, not at all. So the upgrade, what are you thinking? Well, a lot of people like the six-panel door, which is what we have here. This is yeah. a raised six-panel door made up of rails and styles. It's a really great look, mm -hmm. and uh, it's actually pretty easy to replicate. So you're thinking on this one, how are you going to do that? I'm going to get some decorative trim. We'll nail it on. But first, let's strip the hardware off. All right, let's get it on the table. All right, let's start with a four inch top rail. Now we're going to mark the layout of the door. Generally, rails and styles are about four inches, but they grow a little bit larger as you go down the door. I'm going to center my mid rail on the doorknob, and it's okay if there's a little bit extra on the bottom rail. Then we can use a straight edge to connect the lines. Now that we have our layout, I know all the parts that I need. I'm going to pull the measurements, cut all my rights first, then flip it over, set a jig, and cut all my lefts. All right, can you run a bead of glue on the inside of the line? Got it. Our trim pieces glued to the face of the door and then are tacked down with a brad nailer. We got our trim nailed down. I putty the holes and I put some caulk around the trim so it's nice and tight. Mm -hmm. So we're ready to start painting. And what did you pick for a paint? I used a, uh, I picked a satin finish because over the years it's going to be exposed to a lot of hands. So it handles the dirt pretty well. A little extra durability than the flat. Yeah. Brushing it on by hand, you get a nice kind of grain texture to it where if we rolled it, you get a little bit more of a nap. So it's not bad to put that, that grain look to it. With two coats of paint on it, it's nice and dry. We can install our new hardware. Getting rid of the old brass. We're going to go for a more modern look. And there you have it. Mm. For a bedroom door, you might want to do both sides, but if it was a closet door, maybe just one side and paint the rear. Right. Well, I tell you what, it's an easy upgrade, and it makes a huge difference. Nice job. Thank you. Shannon? Hey, Mauro. Nice to meet you. You too. Thanks for having us here. Yeah, welcome. This is our house. As you can see, we're on a busy road. It's very busy. Yeah, yeah, so we wanted to update the curb appeal, and last summer we painted our door. And then we thought, how else could we update the house and update the curb appeal? Maybe the shutters, um, maybe go with a darker color, like a navy blue, make it pop. Oh, I like the idea. I like the front door color. I like the idea of this navy blue for the shutters. Because right now we have this light gray siding and light blue shutters. They all kind of blend in together. Yeah, we were thinking, should we buy new shutters or should we just paint our existing shutters? Uh, to me, the shutters looks in very good condition. I don't see a reason for you to buy new ones. Let's take them off, label them, and paint them. Awesome. Each shutter is held in place with six right. screws right through the face. All right, let's flip this over. And this is going to be our shutter number 11. All right. So we know exactly what to put them back. OK, we're going to start by cleaning the shutters up. You notice there's a little bit of dust on it. We're going to mix with some clear water, and then we're going to do some scrubbing. We're going to mix this biodegradable detergent with water. The cleaner is concentrated. We're going to add it one cup for four gallons of water. 
All right, Shannon? I want you to dip your brush in there, and uh, we're just gonna scrub the shutters, just like that. Is there anything special about these brushes? Uh, not really, it's just like a medium stiff, just good enough to scrub the vinyl. We want to get all the dust off so the paint can stick. Just make sure to get on this side too. Let's spray off the back side and make it clean. All right, Shannon, our shutters are completely clean. And you know, it has this factory finish on it. I want to replicate that finish. And I'm going to use this airless spray machine. The airless spray means it pumps the paint directly from the can. And you can rent at the Anaheim Center. I have already primed. I get all the water and air out of the system. It only pumps paint now. What do you think about the color? I love it. It's exactly what we were looking for. Let's do it? Yeah. All right. Go ahead. See, you can't, you can't go like this, look. You're doing like this. Okay, it's kind of hard to stand Yeah, there. you gotta go like this. Stop, stop, stop. Every time when you re you're out of the shutter, you let the trigger go, okay? okay? Let me show you this a little bit. Just like this. All right. Okay. So what kind of paint is this? It's an exterior premium paint that is good for almost any surface, including vinyl. Don't tilt the gun. Yeah. Yeah. Go all the way out. Okay. Yeah. Can I stand like this? That's it. Perfect. That's good. Don't forget to overlap by 50% always. Yeah. Nice, another one. Yep, beautiful. Overlap by 50% always. Yep. 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 Keep going. Yep. Keep going. You can see that I cover the grass with the drop cloths because it definitely is going to be some overspray. First coat's dry, and now it's time for the second and final coat. Eleven. It's important to line up the screws with the old holes. That's why we label all the shutters when we take them out. I want you to come right behind me and touch up the screw heads with a little bit of paint. Wow, Shannon, take a look at it. What do you think? I love right? it. It's amazing what a little paint can do, huh? Yeah, compared to what the house looked like this morning, it really looks incredible. Perfect. Are you happy? I'm so happy. If you're happy, I'm happy. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.